My friends, we've got what I consider to be a routine project coming up right here. And quite honestly, it's been sitting in the shop way too long. Been in here for about three months or so now, waiting to be set up. And that's all we're doing on this is a nice setup. So we'll turn the camera down here and get started. Well, the first thing we have to do on a setup is just kind of see where we're at because uh, you never know. Sounds like it's relatively in tune, so that's close enough for checking the action. It's already pretty dang good. God, that's sad that, that it's been sitting here this long and it's really pretty good. Man, it's like it's exceptionally good, really. Golly, it's like 75, 80 right there. I mean, how much you can't get it much better than that. And it's about 70 there. This end, the uh, nut end, it doesn't generally help you to change that in terms of the sound. Let me see what the action's like. It's pretty darn good, I gotta be honest. Man can be gone a little tiny bit in a place or two, but not much. Wow. I'm just not exactly sure, you know, if he's gonna be happy if he doesn't like this. If this is not a good setup, I don't know what is, you know, because that's pretty darn good for a uh, dreadnought guitar. We'll see what we can do. Maybe we can make it just a hair lower, but I don't know how we can get it much lower. Yeah, it's about 80. I really wouldn't want to go much below that. And it's, golly, 65, 70. You can't, you just can't do much more than that. Well, I had a thought that I better play it because uh, it's been sitting here that long and uh, maybe the reason it's in here is that it's uh, buzzing or something. Just a teeny bit of buzz right there at the body line, but that's fairly common, especially one set up this low. I'll see what I can do about all that. I do hear a little bit of a weirdness right about in here whenever I'm noting that uh, D chord, and that could be the way the saddle's cut. Well, we'll just pay special attention and try to make it as nice as we can make it. That's about all we can do. Okay, I've got the strings off of it, and I'm testing the uh, saddle here for tightness, and uh, it seems to be just a perfect fit, i got to be honest. So I don't see any reason to reinvent the wheel there. I think we'll make one just exactly like this, except out of bone or antler in, in my case. Yeah, because this is not bone, I don't believe. I'm going to double check it with a heat test. As I said, I think this uh, saddle is uh, a plastic or a man-made material. I'm gonna do a heat test. I'm gonna heat up this little wire till it turns red hot. And then I'm gonna touch it on this plastic and see if it melts. That's pretty hot. No, it's burning, it's not melting. I think it's bone. Well, I don't think this is uh, tusk or plastic after all. I think it is bone. It's, uh, it's hard to tell on some of these materials, but uh, after looking at it closer, I believe it is bone. 
I'll take it over to the microscope and see if that'll give me any clue. I don't see any indication that it's a man-made material after I got it out of there. That's what made me want to test it. And it does kind of look like I can see the grain of the bone in there. So I'm going to look under a microscope just to double check. Best I can tell, it's bone. So there's very little difference between bone and antler. In fact, I don't know of any difference. Some people swear that the antler's even better, but honestly, I can't really say I'd be doing the guy a favor spending an hour making this and charging him a hundred bucks. I don't think you'd hear a hundred dollars worth of difference. The only thing I see is there are some marks in the top of the saddle here, which could have been causing part of that weird sound. So I think I'll just do a light file job on this to clean it up and we'll put it back in, I think. Well, my friends, I went ahead and called the customer again because uh, I wasn't here when this one got dropped off. I think Emery was here. Quite honestly, had I been here, I probably would have talked him out of leaving it because <laughs> I don't want to take anybody's money if I can't improve something. And in this case, I still can improve this a little bit. There's a few little things, but they're not huge by any stretch. And uh, I asked him about that and he says, no, he says it really is just a very minor issue. He said he, th he just feels like it's a little bit harder to play than some of his other guitars he's got. Well, I do hear a few little problems and I do notice the action is just a hair high on a couple of strings at the nut. So, you know, I'm going to work on it a little bit and tighten it up just a little bit. I think we can make him happy, but I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything real obvious. And that's why I wanted to call him. You know, sometimes people will say, well, don't you hear that buzz at a certain soap place, you know? And sometimes you just don't hear those things until somebody calls your attention to it, you know. I'm cleaning off this saddle because there's some extra grooves in this that I don't feel need to be there. So I'm just kind of lightly cleaning that up. If anything, that'll drop it a hair, but only a hair. I mean, like you wouldn't even be able to measure it, I don't think but I'm just trying to make sure it's not gonna buzz anywhere or make any weird sounds. I think that's pretty good. We'll double check the intonation on this once we get it, the strings on it and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in. Double checking that it's cleaned out there. It really does fit well, so it's it's a good setup. Whoever did the setup on this, I assume at the factory, did a good job. I'm gonna bevel the ends of these pins also while I've got it apart here. Okay, I could hear a very minimal buzzing in this area, so I'm gonna set this in here. I, see, there's a little bit of a rock going on here. Not very bad. I mean, that's kind of typical. You have to expect that kind of because your fretboard bends back down, but you can file through that and get rid of it. I'm also going to look down the frets right now on camera and just make sure that it's, you know, not too much underbow or anything. It looks pretty level. If anything, it's probably got just a fraction, just a minor, 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 minor amount of overbow in it, which should come out when we string it up. So I think it's just about perfect, really. I mean, it's, it's flat to just a hair with overbow which I think is just about right, really. It did flatten this one off here pretty good and it flattened off a couple of these others, so I think that's good. The rest of them are just lightly touched, so I'll recrown those. Okay, so I'm just gonna lightly recrown these. It won't take much. Just very lightly recrown them because they're not flattened off much. I just basically touch them just to make sure they're all level. I'm noticing these ends are kind of sharp, so I'm going to round those off a little bit. I 
feels real good. All right, I'll continue on up here now. You notice I'm rocking this as I do this, by the way. I'm trying to re-round it, not take anything off the top. So what I'll do now is I'll get some uh, very fine sandpaper and uh, go across these real quick and then I'll polish them out. Got some 600 here and I'm just going to go with, with the uh, fret. The fretboard's in very good shape so I didn't see much point in scraping it. Taking a little bit more up here because these are were filed a little bit more. Every time you're not around, I'm by myself, I get to be the girl. If someone calls out your name, will I get the That's really nice. These frets right in here still got a little bit of. I mean, it's microscopic, but there's still a little bit there and a little bit here. That looks really nice. So what I'll do is wipe this all off. And let you see how shiny they are. They're pretty darn shiny. They're really nice, smooth, and very shiny. Yet, I think we go ahead, because this guitar's been in here so long, and it's a very nice guitar and set up very well, I think I'll go ahead and polish these for the fella. He seems to be fairly picky about his instruments, so we might as well give him the, the best treatment we can. We'll just put a little dab on here, and try to make them look like a mirror. Shouldn't be too hard to get them to look like a mirror with the uh, as smooth as they are now. And I'll just show you that first one. See how much shinier it is than the rest of them? The, f the rest of them are nice, but look at that first one. It really shines. So I'll go ahead and do all the rest of those off camera, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Well, that uh, got them all real shiny. You can probably see yourself in the, all of those now. So let's just put a few drops of Be Good Oil on here. Rubbing it in really good uh, for one to help it penetrate, but for two to you know even clean off a little bit of the junk that's on there because it's it does act like a little bit of a solvent and and you know anything liquid does and uh, so it kind of helps clean it a little bit as you're putting it on there too. Took a teeny bit of the luster off of the frets, so I'm wiping that back off of there real good, and uh, that's putting the luster back. That looks real good now. The other thing I noticed on this is these corners are really sharp on this uh, saddle, especially on the bass side. You feel it more on the treble side when you're playing, so I'm going to work on both sides, but the bass side is especially sharp. Good now. 
do the same thing on the base side, which is the sharper of the two anyway. That's real nice. Got rid of that. I'm tempted to try to knock this saddle down just a hair because he wanted it nice. So, I mean, it's pretty dang low. I hate to try to lower it much, but I, I think I will just see if I can scratch 10 thousandths off of it, which would drop it about another 5 thousandths here. And I think this thing is set up flat enough that it'll probably be okay to do that. But uh, it's right on that edge. I, you know, I could ruin it all and have to start over here. So I'm just gonna put a black mark along this so I can see it. And quite honestly, marking 10 thousandths is pretty hard to do. I got out the little tiny dial calipers and that's 15 thousandths. Can you see how narrow that is? <laughs> that's all I'm taking off because that's all we can afford to take off. And I had to get out these little calipers because they still got their real sharp corners on them. You can possibly see that little line back there on that black. It's right against the bottom edge. And I'm just going to go in until that bottom edge, till that white line disappears. Well, I did that and I put it back in there. So we're ready to string it up and then the only other thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to work on the action up here at the nut but we got to get the strings on it to do that properly. It's been a few months since I've showed my stringing technique and this is the fastest way and in my opinion the best way that you can string up a guitar. So I've already got the string attached at the bridge end so I'm not going to show you that but so what you do then is you pull it tight and you put it in the groove here and you pull it up around the post and you're, you're actually pulled tight. So you could actually almost play it. You're pulling it that tight. And then you go around the post. You start from the inside, you go around the outside. You go above the string that's already there. And then you, you can go around as, you know, as much as you want. But I say one and a half to two times around. Then you go above all the strings and poke it through the hole. You, so you want to make sure that when you poke it through the hole, you're staying above all the strings. What that does, this method does, is it wraps the string at, from the bottom of the post up. And it's incredibly fast. You don't need a string winder. As you can hear, you're already tight. So you don't even need a string winder or anything. And then you just cut this off. Cut it off flat like that. And you know you want to leave them flat like that. You don't want all that decoration up here because that decoration, you know, coiling it around, making all kinds of designs, that can just cause buzzes and you know extra noises that you don't want to hear. All right, so we'll do it, we'll do it with the next string. So here's the A string. We'll put it in the groove, pull up from the inside of the post, around the outside like this, wrap it once. And, you know, you, you, again, you just want to make sure that your, each wrap stays on top of the previous wrap. And then you go back through the hole, staying above both, all the strings. And then you just pull it up as tight as you can, lift it straight up like that, and you're perfectly fine. You don't have to do any more than that. As you can hear, it's already tight. And you don't have to uh, use a string winder. Cut it off flush with the top, you're done. So that's all you do on the base side. I'll do one more just to show you on the base side here. Around the outside, around it again like that, one and a half turns. Come back around through the hole and uh, stay above all your strings. Pull it up real tight, lift it up straight. Now this one here, I didn't have it pulled quite as tight, so it's a little bit more winding, but not much. That, that also, the other thing that that does is it keeps about the same amount of windings on your post, which makes it look better too. Even though that doesn't really matter, doesn't really count, at least it does make it look a little better. I'm going to uh, show you a different technique for the treble strings. and the re I don't use the same technique on the treble side. So I'm going to leave a little bit of slack. You can see where my thumb is. I'm pulling it up tight, but I'm leaving a little slack. And I'm going to go through, through the hole from the inside out, like this, from the inside of the peg head out, and then pull it up where I've got just a little bit of slack left. 
these other strings are getting in my way here. And uh, then I go back around the outside of the peg head this way, under the slack, like this, lift it up like that where I'm bending it back over the string. What that does is it locks this string in place because you've just wrapped around it and it can't pull out. And I do that on the treble strings. Do you have to do it this way on the treble strings? No, you don't have to. You could wrap it a couple more times around there and do the same technique as on the other side, but I would want at least one more full wrap beyond what I did on these because otherwise it could potentially slip. But this won't slip. There's no chance that it could slip, and that's why I did it this way. And then the only thing you want to make sure is that you're wrapping down the post as you spin this. You always want to have your tight part of your string at the bottom of your post. And that's a leverage thing. If you get it at the top, then you, you, you'll have too much leverage on your tuning key, and that's not a good thing. Okay, so that's all I did on that. I'll show you one more of those, and then I'm going to do the last one off camera. You go through the hole from the inside out. You leave a little bit of slack about that much. You go back around the end of the, like toward the end of the peg head, you come back under your slack there, you pull it up tight to the post, and you lift up, and you wrap it around the end of that string there. Now you, that, that locked the string in, it cannot pull out. You couldn't pull it out if you had a pliers. You could break it, but you couldn't pull it out. And then you could use a string winder here, and because I did leave a little bit more slack on that one, I'm going to go ahead and use a string winder. You don't really have to leave much slack there. I left a little more than I needed. But anyway, that worked out just fine. And then once again, cut it off right at the top of your post. That's what it looks like after you're done. I think I was moving around. I had the camera zoomed up, so you might not have been able to see the whole process, but uh, that's what it does look like. You cut it off even with the top of your post. It can't slip. Because I had the camera zoomed out and maybe I didn't get it in frame, I'll do one more. I'll go ahead and do the last one too. I've got the hole pointed across ways here. That's just a little bit of a helpful thing. You don't have to do that, but it does help. All right, again, I'm not, I'm not uh, leaving a lot of slack, but a little bit. Go back around, come under the slack, like so. Lift it up, pull it up tight, wrap it around the string like that. Now you can hold this up, you can hold the, the uh, slack up with your finger, keeping this part pressed down, and start winding. And again, because I've got a little more slack here than I need, I'm just gonna go ahead and wind it with a string winder. And I'm making sure that this pass goes under the, the previous pass. So once you get it started, it'll stay there, but you have to get it started sometimes. And there you go. It's all done. So that's about as quick as you can put strings on a guitar. And it's very safe, accurate. Uh, you could do that on stage even and do it really fast, especially on the bass side. Okay, got the strings on it, got it roughly tuned to pitch. Just gonna check it here. It's so crazy low, it's ridiculous. It's like 65 to 70 there, which is really low. Um, it's like 60 there. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's about 70 here and 60 or so there. So that's as low as you can go, really, and even that, to me is, is really too low, but you know, it depends on your style of playing. Now these, these are just a hair high, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop these down just a little bit. Not very much, but just a little bit. It looks like somebody put some filler in here. That's not a good sign for me. Uh, that could easily be a problem. I don't like filler in these slots. I'm gonna double check it before I go very far. It's still a little high, so we're okay. That's a good thing.
It does look like there's filler in there. Pretty sure there is. That's still though, it's still high, so I'm okay. The trick on this is make sure you keep your angle equal to your peg head. That's the trick. I'm going to go ahead and tune this one back up and check it. That's pretty low, but let me double check it. Nope, it's still not as low as it could be. Because I'm not, I'm really, like, here's another test. You hit it open and slide this in there. It does stop it, but not, it's not lifting it at, at all. So I'm going to go ahead and go a hair more. I'm a brave guy. I kind of think it's sitting on that filler, maybe. I'm going to, I hope I didn't drop it too much here. I'm just getting rid of that filler. I don't like that filler in there. <sighs> Definitely has filler. Just get, I didn't go any lower yet because I didn't, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to drop on me like crazy after getting rid of that filler. So far it didn't drop, so I guess we're okay. a hair low. I didn't really take it down much. It, I think that filler's crossing me up. That's too low. Doggone it. Ugh. It's too low by just a hair. I mean like it's, it's only a thousandth of an inch too low probably. Doggone it. Well, I'm going to move on a little bit and, and see what we can do here. I'm going to go ahead and see where we're at with this one, see if it's got filler in the next one. I have a way I can fix that and it won't be a problem. Some of you won't like it, but I'll fix it and it won't be an issue. Yeah, I think there's filler in this one too. I hate it when there's filler in these things. It makes it really hard to do what I'm doing. Because you don't, you can't predict when it's going to chip out of there, fall out of there, that type of thing. It's still high. Yeah, that filler stuff scares the tar out of me when you start cutting it down. It's lifting it just a hair, and that's good. All right, I'm going to go to the third one. That's probably about it on that one. Find the pick here so I can kind of double check it. Yep, that's pretty good, really. It really is. These are okay on the base side, I think. I think the base side's okay. The treble sides were high. All right, so now we've got a little bit of a problem on this one because it got a little bit down in there, mostly due to that filler crud that was in there, and there was a lot of it. Okay, so we're down, at least we're down on the base plastic. So what I'm going to do. Uh, now I'm going to put a new string on it since that one broke. But what I'm going to do instead of filling it, I'm going to just re-level uh, this right here just a teeny tiny bit. And you won't even notice it. No one would notice it. I'm going to go ahead and take the second string off too just because it will make it easier. And I'm going to uh, just Put a little bit of extra pressure, feather it back, and you won't be able to tell it at all. And 
now I'll just recrown that and rebuff that and everything will be just fine. Well, my friends, I've got it all back together. You can't tell where I did the little uh, feathering right there. And it's still very, very, very low action. Uh, might even be a hair too low for some people, but it doesn't seem to buzz. I'll play it for you. set up I can tell you that much for sure gee whiz is this low um, again on the bass side here it is 75 on the treble side it is wow 55 to 60 I mean it's like 60 at the most If you don't play real, real hard, it, you can't beat it. Uh, but if you play really hard, it's going to buzz a little bit because it's just that dead gum low. <laughs> and uh, the, I've looked down the relief; it's just about perfectly flat with the tension on there. So a person could loosen the truss rod just a hair. I mean, like like a less than a quarter turn, and it would probably be just fine. But on the other hand, it you know, with, with the action like it is, I mean, it plays easier now than it would if you put some relief in there. If you put a little more relief in there, it's just gonna make the action a little bit higher. So it really plays good right as it is. I really don't think you can get one set up any better than this, and I did tweak a number of things. I ground off these pins, I lowered the action, I refiled the top up there, I leveled and recrowned all the frets and polished them out, I, uh, slotted the uh, the first three strings uh, dropped them down quite a bit that first one was just full of filler and that's where the problem came in it I got all that filler out of there and the string was too low I was able to feather that out and I don't think it's a problem now so I think the guy will love it if he uh, has any problems he's local I think so it shouldn't be any big deal I can always fix it no charge if the if he has to bring it back but honestly you can't really do it much better than that <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed seeing how we do the fine details on a setup. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, well, please get that done as well. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.